Well, the Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi is assuring Nigerians that he will restructure the country to bring the much-needed change if elected president. Obi gave the assurance at the presidential campaign rally in Markodi, the Benue state capital. Addressing supporters at the rally, the Labour Party flag bearer says the federal government under his leadership will, amongst other things, support every state, prioritize security and improve the educational sector. Obi says Nigerians should hold him responsible for his campaign promises if elected to office. Federal government of Nigeria, under Peter Obi and that team, will support every state to be productive. We will remove Nigeria from consumption to production. Peter Obi, presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Well, let's mm -hmm. now join uh, Frank Schwaibu, or actually let Frank Schwaibu join us. <laughs> He's the special <laughs> advisor yes. to uh, Chico Bubaka. And uh, from our offsite studio, we have Arise News Politics Editor, Somna Sambu, to discuss this political development across Nigeria today. Thank you so much, both of you, for being on the news tonight. I'd like to begin with you, Frank, and uh, your presidential campaign train moved to uh, Medjugorje, Borneo State today. Uh, we had conflicting reports. He was attacked. He wasn't attacked. We had a reporter on ground. She said there was indeed an attack, even though it was outside of the campaign venue. How do you assess these attacks as a party? And does it impact your chances in this state? I say states because it's not the first time it's happening. It's happened in Kaduna State and today in Borneo. Well, um, the APC are only venting what I call their frustration. Because the two states it has happened so far are APC controlled states and it is shameful and embarrassing. And that's why we have said times with our number that uh, we know that they have nothing to campaign with. We know that they cannot speak to Nigerians. We know that um, the election for 2023 is simply uh, what we call a barometer to run a check on using two, two major factors, hunger and anger. And because hunger and anger are the major determinants for 2023 presidential election in Nigeria and all other elections in Nigeria, you know, they know that they have nothing to sell to the people. So all they do is just frustrate our campaign trail, you know, try to cause mayhem, which is diametrically opposed to the peace accord with all the political party leaders, particularly the candidates, signed on the 28th of, or 28th of September 2022. And incidentally, their, political, their candidate, the APC presidential candidate, was not only absent, he, he, in fact he was not absent, but was represented by his running mate. So of course he can, um, he can uh, lay claim to the fact that oh, I wasn't there so I may not understand. But you see, uh, the other issue is the fact that it's even your choice of words by saying we have conflicting reports. You know, the, the, uh, you, the uh, Arise um, TV is one medium that is renowned as the flagship of, uh, broadca of uh, broadcast journalism in Nigeria. And if you have your correspondent who was on ground and your correspondent confirmed, affirmed that, and he was even a victim and came to but the studio with a But that's that out. And I use the word confusing yes, because you know, there was so, head you know, yes. from the police command in Borono State saying and that. No such thing happened. And I backed it up by saying we did have a reporter on ground who was here on the news and told us there was you indeed see, an attack. We, we, have, we have, have pictorial evidence of our, our vehicles, of smashed windscreens. We have over 70 persons in hospital, as I speak with you, undergoing treatment in various clinics and, and all of that. You know, but the, the beautiful thing is this. What we expect the APC to do, instead of resorting to, do, to do, doing this, is to move from state to state, apologize to the people of Nigeria. We have failed you as a government. For seven and a half years we have been in power. We, you know, we have failed. 
we are sorry. Please take back your country. Let the PDP, the PDP was here. At the time they were here, a do dollar was XYZ price. Today, dollar is over 800, almost going to 1,000 Naira compared to one dollar. So we, are, we apologize. And that's what we expect them to do. But you see, but this reckless brigandage can, will take us nowhere. All right, uh, let's bring in um, uh, Somna Sambo, Rise News uh, editor there. Uh, Somna, what do you make of all of this? Frank just said it makes nonsense of the whole peace accord that was signed by, you know, the different top uh, candidates, both at the presidential and governorship level. And what does this violence really portend for our politics and even more importantly, our democracy as a whole? Violence, has it come to stay? Thank you, Ngozi. Uh, from what we have seen now, uh, we also have to be very careful so that the PDP doesn't seem like it's making political capital out of what is happening. The police have to uh, thoroughly investigate these issues. And uh, the very first draft statement being sent out by the police uh, it actually leaves a lot to be, you know, uh, uh, to, to, uh, leaves a lot of room for more investigation rather than them just coming out to tell Nigerians that, look, nothing actually happened. Yes. Uh, what actually happened from what we are seeing, videos being sent on social media, it actually looks like hooliganism and uh, lots of talks trying to actually attack uh, this uh, uh, convoy and not necessarily, you know, uh, the issues of gunshot like the PDP had made us to understand uh, was actually happening. Uh, because from what we could see, uh, are broken glasses here and there. I mean, these are normal features of political campaigns in Nigeria where, you know, uh, anxious uh, 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 people will want to vent their anger on certain issues here and there. But uh, nonetheless, the police itself being dismissive of the whole thing without telling us whether they are actually inv investigating the issue calls uh, for a lot of worries because, I mean, from what we can see on our screens right now, I mean, these are windows of uh, vehicles at that campaign, you know, being broken. This could have been smashed by Kojel. Uh, not necessarily by a bullet and all of that, like the PDP is making it look. So uh, they, I expected the police to actually uh, engage more on investigating if indeed these were thugs rather than um, uh, the allegations being made by the main opposition that, you know, these were gunshots and all of that. And then uh, from what uh, we can see and hear, the actual event itself went on peacefully. That is, the main campaign ground at the Ramat Square went on peacefully without any event. It was at the Shehu of Bruno's Palace that this actually happened and they were attacked. Yes, you always have overzealous uh, people here and there. Uh, but of course, uh, these two incidents happening in APC state, uh, that's talking about the one that happened in Kaduna, which was more worse off than this, because we could see that happening exactly at the campaign square, and this happening now in Borno state, it means that the police needs to reassure other opposition parties that when uh, they go to APC control states, that nothing bad will happen to them, because the APC itself will soon begin its campaign. What happens when the APC goes into opposition control state? I mean, if nothing is done to guarantee uh, the safety of other opposition politicians, then it can actually lead to, to mayhem. But the police should not be quick to be dismissive. They should investigate more before issuing such statements. Normal but not acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank Schreiber, let me come back to you and stay with your party. The G5 governors, the 5G governors, I don't know what they're calling themselves these days. And you saw Governor Bala uh, joining them there today. Uh, Governor, we can make a statement. He did say that they were the founding members of the party and that the door is not closed to reconciliation. A day they say is a long time in Nigeria in politics. Um, is there still reconciliation? Is there still room for a rapprochement in your party, uh, the party vassals, the 5G, G5 governors? Of course. Of course, PDP has a very rich history of, um, of uh, reconciliation. They have a very rich, uh, rich history of, um, of uh, constructive uh, conversation. And um, we, we, don't, we have never foreclosed uh, the issue of reconciliation as it relates to 
what you christen the G5 governors. But to, but to say that, oh, they are the founding members of the PDP is not, um, I'm sure that's a matter of conjecture because but the last time I checked, I know Governor Tom was elected on the platform of the APC before he crossed over to the PDP. So I don't understand what how that makes him a founding member of the PDP. You know, but that notwithstanding, on that, that was just uh, by the way, you know, um, we are open, our doors are open, our campaign trail is on. We're selling our manifesto to Nigerians, we're telling them what article, Abu Bakr article, co article to bring on board, how we're going to change the story, how we're going to put food on their table, how we're going to protect lives and property. You know, but most importantly, you know, I do not want a situation where we, as a people, we continue to normalize as if nothing happened. Gunshots, when we're talking of gunshots, it's about hearing. We, thank, we give glory to God that lives were not lost today. You know, if lives were lost, that's when we talk of when we say, "Oh, maybe truly there were gunshots." Were you in Borno? Mm. Yes, I was in Borno. Okay. So, if, so we, we were on ground. You understand me? So it takes the man, the man who wears the shoes, knows where what where it pinches. When you saw people in those videos campaigning for safety, it was because of the sounds that they they they, 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 they could hear. You know, and the, the, my anger is this: the people of Borno State who have been under what we call what we call the painful the painful experience of not of of being balkanized owing to insecurity are you with me mm -hmm. of their children not being able to go to school of the farmers not being able to access their farmlands of the market women not be able to go to markets to sell their wares you understand ordinarily should vent their anger on the ruling party who brought this upon them so uh, having Atiku Abakar come in, when you say it didn't happen at a campaign venue, I think that is that was that was overreaching because the, the campaign trail stopped at the, at the palace of the show of Bruno and Ruth the stadium to pay homage to the traditional ruler, who is the custodian of the land. So if that that was still part of the campaign activities, so it it didn't matter if the the event if if uh, the attack was at the venue of the rally or outside the venue of the rally. Does it make it less important because it didn't happen at the venue? You understand me? Mm. It's about the human lives we're talking about. Right. So we're talking about leading a people. We're talking about uh, 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 about um, selling uh, our manifestos to the people, to, to, the, to, the, to, the, ma to the mass of our people. Mm. And elections should be con conducted and campaigns should be conducted in the most decorous manner. The, right. the midterm elections are ongoing in the United States of America. And we know that, look, everything is going on seamlessly. You don't need to see this brandishing of guns, grudges, matches, and all that. What is, what is the difference between a matchet and a gun? One has right. a bullet. The other one can, can cut off someone's head just in a split second. So what is bad is bad. And this is incurably bad. And we call on the Inspector General of Police. We call on the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari is a non-violent person. He has never advocated this. I know he will not. He will not want this to continue to happen. I remember vividly during, on September 28th, at the Peace Accord meeting, led by uh, His Excellency um, General Abdul Salam, he, mm -hmm. sent, he sent a recorded message to that gathering. And he said, look, we will, he will not condone this. We should be right. our brother's keeper. Let okay. us elect people of proven character and leadership. Rather than bringing people, we are talking about, instead of uh, going ahead to All explain right, their uh, $460,000 uh, for, fee, for feature, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, they are here sending talks to disrupt our campaign rallies. <laughs> they have more okay, to let's, achieve uh, and let's more bring to in Very quickly, uh, Somna Sambo. Yeah, of course, uh, Borno State uh, is the home state of uh, the APC's uh, presidential running mate in the person of Kashim Shatima. Now, let, let's move on to other issues still concerning, of course, the PDP. When Wike says the, I mean, reconciliation is possible, is it backtracking? Do you expect some kind of change in terms of uh, rapprochement as we move towards uh, the elections? Yes, indeed. Uh, Wiki has realized, uh, from my own perspective, that, uh, you know, there is no way these, um, you know, 5G governors, as we hear they are now being called, uh, can actually survive outside of the PDP. I mean, because if you look at the political temperature at the moment, is it uh, the APC that they want to move to or the Labour Party that they want to move to when they, their own personal structures are already on ground? Some of them are contesting senatorial seats. Some of their aides are contesting as governors. Some of their aides got House of Reps tickets here and there. So they just have to stay in PDP. Even if 
they wouldn't have loved to reconcile. But because of these factors, because they have several aides, uh, you know, even some even family members who are contesting the elections under the ticket of the People's Democratic Party, I think. Uh, it, it sounds like good news. This is the sort of news that we ought to have been hearing from Governor Nyesom Wiki. And I think a lot of uh, uh, members of the People's Democratic Party and other peace-loving Nigerians will actually be happy for this kind of statement. Because if uh, uh, they had continued on the trajectory and then uh, uh, this sort of statements that they were issuing out, I mean, a lot of, uh, it could have precipitated a lot of crisis within the PDP that could actually affect us as a nation. Because look at it in the, in the Second Republic. What led to the downfall of that republic is because of reckless statements by politicians and, of course, the uh, uh, poor economic indices uh, that uh, eventually led to the sack of the Sheikh Shagari government. And so, if you have politicians coming together to nip, uh, you know, in the board, you know, boarding issues like this. It helps to resolve not just internal party crisis, it also helps to resolve the political crisis within the country. So a lot of political watchers will actually be happy that uh, Wike is stepping down from his high horse to actually give room for reconciliation. And I think the presidential candidate himself, Atiku Abubakar, was actually smart. Look at that smart move that he pulled through by meeting with Governor uh, Bala Mohamed just yesterday. Because Governor Bala Mohamed was very succinct in stating clearly that Atiku Abubakar was beginning to, to look like he wasn't going to support his uh, second term ambition. And of course, it would be foolhardy for Bala Mohamed to just go ahead and support Atiku Abubakar when it's very clear to him that his own uh, re-election bid is uh, uh, being threatened. So with the way Atiku moved swift, swiftly to address that issue with Bala Mohamed, I expect that to happen. He needs to meet with Wike very urgently in the next 24 hours, if you ask me, to be able to resolve the issues finally. <laughs> oh, Frank, wow. Frank Trevor, you're laughing. Yeah, uh, laughing. You think it cannot happen it's 24 hours? No, no, no. You see, you see, the beautiful thing is the fact that, um, you know, uh, like uh, Suna said, uh, 24 hours. Of course, it, anything can happen in politics. And mm -hmm. interestingly, one, one beautiful thing I saw there too was the fact that uh, Governor Autumn, I listened to him, um, capitulated as well and apol did apologize after calling um, uh, His Excellency Atuku Abubakar. Uh, a full animal and that uh, he should go to hell, you know, and he went, he, at least he traveled to Bauti to visit another full animal. So for me, I believe that there is, there is a beautiful room for reconciliation. And um, of course, our, our doors are open, always open. We have always mm. said this, these are our governors. They are still under the umbrella. They just left the bedroom to the sitting room. You call them G5 governors. And it reminds me of, <laughs> um, of the Four Guys restaurant somewhere in Busetu. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very quickly. I mean, uh, Atiku Abakar did uh, mention that he visited, of course, he visited the Shehu of Borno, where the Shehu of Borno made uh, some four or five uh, requests, you know, security, reactivation of the child, uh, base in development, electricity in the local government areas, and, of course, all exploration in the same Chad Basin. Can Atiku indeed uh, deliver on this if he becomes president? Yes, he has said he will deliver. He has promised to do so, but can he and will he? By the grace of the Almighty, when Atiku Abubakar gets elected on the, uh, in February 2022, you should be sure that he, he will not just deliver, but he will do more than what he has said. Particularly, you should be excited that this is one person who came. He's the only candidate who is who is not just prepared, but most prepared candidate in this race. Mm. You understand? We did not just release our con his covenant with Nigerians, but he did release it earlier. In fact, over two months ago. And well, it's been in public domain for Nigerians to know that, look, this is what we want to do. This is my covenant with Nigerians. Okay. This is what I want to it's do. It's not like he's just telling them what they want not to hear. Not at all. You see, all right. state. it is a stickler for discipline. Very you quickly, want, stickler yes. for discipline. Time will tell. We'll keep our mm. fingers crossed. Sumna <laughs> Sambo, uh, let's talk about some of the other presidential candidates that moved around today. Uh, Kwan Kwan So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, saying no that, you know, vote leaders of competence and experience. And a lot of people will say, the front runners perhaps do have that quality. And then we have Obi, who on the other hand said that um, he will restructure and prioritize security, something we've heard from him before talking about security, but he's saying now, we'll restructure. 
Yes, Kwonko so actually sent out the right uh, message in his uh, visit to Enugu. I was actually very happy when he said it, that look, uh, you know, the beauty about the 2023 elections is that Nigerians can no longer complain that they don't have enough options. Apart from having 18 presidential candidates, of course, we have like about top six, uh, if you're to use uh, several metrics to actually judge them. And of course, he's saying that, look, if you are angry with the PDP or you're angry with the APC, there's another option that has been provided. I am available for you, I mean, of course, other political parties. And this is the beauty of multi-party democracy, actually, where you have very strong contenders who are able to drive their message very well. You will see that it creates room. And he said that there are lots of Nigerians who are aggrieved about the big two political parties. So, I mean, it has created an opportunity for him to present himself. And, you know, seeing a northern presidential candidate going to the southeast of the country to go and campaign and and then talk on issues. I mean, this is the beauty of it. And not just, you know, focusing on ethnic issues here and there. I, I, I can only wish uh, Kwan Kwan so well as he tries to court, you know, a lot of Nigerians who are based in the southeastern part of the country. And then, of course, uh, uh, juxtapose it with uh, Peter Obi, who's from the southeast, you know, being present in the north central state of Benue. I mean, you could see how colorful that uh, 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 Labour Party uh, rally was, you know. Uh, uh, trouble free uh, the attire was just so beautiful and the things that uh, Peter Obi said I mean I was so much happy with the content of his uh, uh, outreach at uh, 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 Benue State today because you could see him saying that look River Benue and River Niger have not been dredged over the years why has the APC led federal government and the PDP previous administration not dredged uh, the River Benue and River Niger this is contributing to the issues of flood and he's saying that he will restructure the country not only in terms of production and governance like we've always Head, but in terms of both the monies and how the monies are being put into place. So All these right, are the sort of um, statements Sonam. we need to hear. And I'm happy with Obi's outreach in uh, 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 Benue today. I mean, these are the right. sort of rhetoric we need to be hearing. Uh, Frank, in 30 seconds, I mean, Kwan Kwaso says PDP, APC, same 10 and 10 pence. I mean, he's saying NNPP is the new deal. He, he, he was the he, Everything he has achieved politically, he achieved them on the platform of the PDP. So he was part of the PDP and he cannot lay claim to that. That's preposterous. And he, he, and he should just keep quiet. Well, as for Peter B and uh, their, uh, their election or their yeah. campaign rally being rank off free, of course, you saw the number. I could count, I could barely count, I think about 500, said 500 people there. So right. why wouldn't it be rank off free? All right, we'll have to leave it there for a sure. spokesman uh, for Atiku Abubakar, the presidential <laughs> candidate of the PDP, and our own uh, Somna Sambo, Arise Politics Editor. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us on Newsnight.